Hello everyone, this is your professor once again, Dani Arneta Kabulay, on the course Accounting Information Systems. We are currently in video lecture number three, and I will be discussing to you part one of uh, chapter three. Okay, you see, I'm in my library office and I just moved in to a new residence from my old Pasay residence. I'm now based in Paranaque. So much of it are still in boxes. So I see unpacking can be very, very crazy and it would take days. So maybe in later videos, I'll be showing you my beautiful home. But in the meantime, let's get on with our topic for today. Uh, we will be talking about three related, very important topics, ethics, fraud, and internal control. As future accountants or CPAs, you need to know the importance of all these three and how to uh, integrate them in our work and how our organizations can benefit from all these uh, lessons that I'll be teaching you today. So let's get on. I hope that at the end of this lesson, you'd be able to understand very well the broad issues pertaining to business ethics. What is ethical and what is not ethical? Ethical issues related to the use of information technology because some people are prone to abuse them. And distinguish between management fraud and employee fraud, there's a big difference. And the common types of fraud, key features of the SAS 78 and COSO internal control framework. And finally, be able to find out what objects or application of physical controls are there in your organization or uh, what you can do to enhance the internal control through physical means, okay? Now, why should we be concerned about ethics in the business world? Bakit pa kailangan ng ethics? Pwede bang wala na lang yan? Hindi pwede. Ethics are needed when conflicts arise. The need to choose that means you are going to make a crucial decision. For example, if you're going to buy uh, a huge uh, equipment that you will need for operations, which supplier is the best to service you? And sometimes, some relatives might want to participate in the bidding process. Uh, that could be a problem in terms of uh, independence. So you better be ethical in your decisions. So ethics is widely needed when we are making decisions, when we have to choose among options. Very important application. In business, conflicts arise between employees and then management and stakeholders. And when we talk about stakeholders, we're talking about both internal as well as external stakeholders. And also, it could sometimes lead to investigations or litigation. Yes, maraming mga professionals, government officials, nakakasuhan because of ethical malpractice. Okay? So, the lack of ethics could lead you into trouble. I'm sure you've heard about the scandals in Farmally and PhilHealth and all these things that the Commission on Audit have been flagging about this current administration and you will notice that most of this are based on the lack of ethics okay so kung ayaw natin makasuhan ayaw natin magkaroon ng problema let us observe ethics business ethics at all times business ethics involves finding answers to two questions first question how do managers decide on what is right in conducting their business Yan, important yan. Once managers have recognized what is right, how do they achieve it? The manner by which they execute their decisions. So again, it's not a matter of knowing what is right and wrong, but how you do it. Very important also because you could get into trouble in the execution of your decision. Okay? Now, there are four main areas of business ethics. First, equity, rights, Honesty and the exercise of corporate power. So when we talk about equity, we talk about executive salaries, comparable worth, and product pricing. So these are important decisions that companies make. So you talk about equity. Now when you talk about rights, so we talk about corporate due process, employee health screening, employee privacy, sexual harassment, diversity, 
equal employment opportunity and whistleblowing. So these are common issues that we find in the workplace. For example, if your manager committed something wrong, will you report your manager to authorities, to the pertinent uh, uh, department to investigate? Or for example, if you find a fellow employee attractive and you make a pass, no? Uh, and you are a manager, is that appropriate? Okay, sexual harassment is quite common in the Philippines because not too many people are aware about the anti-sexual harassment law. So again, you have to behave as an executive. And then employee health screening. So you might be hiring a person who is not really healthy and you will put at risk the other employees in the company because what that person got is highly contagious. And that is, your decision to hire is highly unethical. Especially now at the time of COVID, we find a lot of uh, companies, you know, wanting to hire people who are vaccinated, who are free from COVID or have been, had a negative test. But some people out there are saying it's discrimination, it's foul. So again, there is a very uh, nasty decision to be made. Are you... Uh, hiring only those that are vaccinated and then some people will howl at you and say hey you're discriminating okay again ethics has to be well defined now then we talk about honesty the third area of business ethics and we talk about employee and management conflicts of interest and then security of organization data and records and then misleading advertising truth in advertising questionable business practices in foreign countries, and then accurate reporting of stake shareholder interest. For example, we love to buy products from China, but you know, China has been on the spotlight in the last few decades because they've been very notorious on copying or infringing the copyright or intellectual rights of other companies. Magaling sila mameke. Karamihan ng galing sa China, puro peke, okay? And that puts a... Uh, uh, a major dent on, okay, cheaper sila, pero they're not original. So you are violating some international law on intellectual properties there. So especially uh, yung mga branded uh, uh, products that are highly visible uh, or coveted, no? Uh, so China ginagawa ang karamihan ng mga counterfeits. Would you patronize them? Would you flood your market with counterfeits? And that is going to be a big issue. Are you going for price or are you going for integrity? And then there's also misleading advertising. Many companies now advertise excess, uh, exaggeratedly. No? So they say now we're the best, we're guaranteed to be durable, or we're going to be the best in the market. But apparently those advertisements are simply to entice customers and they're not keeping their word. In short, many companies do not have a word of honor. Many of their advertisements are fake or misleading. They're not truthful about the true state of their products and services. In that case, that's not fair to the consumer or to the clients or to the buyers. So again, that is not ethical because it violates that area of honesty. They're not being completely honest. Okay, And then security of data. Some HR departments of companies, they give out the personal data of their employees to insurance companies, real estate brokers, and the like, no? other uh, parties outside the organization. And that is not ethical because it compromises the privacy of your employees. And magugulat talaga yung mga empleyado mo, marami nagte-text sa kanila, nagbebenta ng kung ano-ano, saan kaya nila nakuha ang cellphone number mo or ang iyong address? O kaya ang iyong Facebook page, for example, because the HR department of your company gave it out. Did you give them permission to give it out? So again, that is a question of ethics again. And finally, we come to the last area, exercise of corporate power. So this also includes a political action committee, workplace safety, product safety, environment issues, divestment of interest, corporate political contributions, 
downsizing and plant closures. So again, this is one whole area of business ethics. For example, uh, if you feel that your company or your work area is not safe, you got to report that. And management has to do something about it. Okay, If your company is so politically inclined, say supporting a particular candidate uh, in a political exercise like elections, they have to be very transparent about their contributions. Okay, And then um, product safety. And this directly affects the customers. So sometimes, lalo na kung pagkain, no, nagkakaroon ng food poisoning or contamination, etc. So we need to really be honest again in terms of how safe really are our products that's why most uh, consumables they have what you call expiration dates di ba yung sa pharmacy nga yung yung face mask face shield nilalagyan nila ng tinatamper nila yung production date and expiration date meron pala siyang expiration date yes believe it or not so that is an example of lack of business ethics now, let's talk about computer ethics, which is largely part of business ethics. This concerns the social impact of computer technology, and by that I refer to hardware, software, and telecommunications. It'll also, peopleware, you know, the services. What are the main computer ethics issues? Well, privacy, security, which includes accuracy and confidentiality, ownership of property, equity in access, environmental issues, artificial intelligence, unemployment and displacement, misuse of computer. Now, when you talk about the legal definition of fraud, what does it mean? Well, we talk about false representation, false statement or disclosure. So when you talk about material fact, we mean a fact that must be substantial in inducing someone to act. And then intent to deceive must exceed, must exist. The misrepresentation must have resulted in justifiable reliance upon information which caused someone to act. And the misrepresentation must have been caused uh, some injury or loss to someone, maybe to, to the organization, to an external entity, or to an employee. So when we talk about the fraud triangle, we talk about three areas. Now you talk about pressure opportunity and ethics itself no so uh, when you say pressure is there pressure to commit fraud was there an opportunity for example yung cashier medyo may pagkaburaga he she tends to forget to lock the drawers that is an opportunity to commit fraud to steal the funds of that cashier and when there's pressure that could be your rationale the the person who's going to commit fraud is kind of tempted to to commit fraud because kailangan kailangan niya ng pera kasi kanyang uh, kapatid ay may sakit, for example. That's pressure already, no? Uh, and then there's the opportunity to commit it, okay? But, you know, the, there's a, a variation to the fraud triangle. It's now called the fraud diamond model. So you include the rationale, what is the reason why you commit fraud, pressure that urges you or motivates you to commit fraud, opportunity, there is that uh, window that you could be very tempted. And finally, the fourth angle, which makes it a diamond, is the capability or capability of the fraudster. Siya ba skillful? Siya ba hustler? Magaling ba siya magnakaw? Magaling ba siya manggoyo? So, pag napaka-skillful niya, malakas ang loob niyan kasi kayang-kaya niya. At baka hindi siya ma-detect. Pero kung siya ay kinakabahan, siya ay mukhang bagito, siya ay amateur, chances are mahuhuli siya. Okay? So again, the fraud diamond now supersedes the fraud triangle model. Okay? Remember the four elements, rationale, the reason why you commit fraud, pressure, that is the motivation to do it, and then opportunity, that is the uh, uh, temptation to commit fraud, and finally, the capability, that is the skill level to commit fraud, okay, of the potential perpetrator. Kailangan mawala yung apat na elements ng fraud do sa fraud diamond para hindi mangyari siya. And you can only do that through good internal control, okay, policies. Now, uh, studies reveal that loss due to fraud equal to 
7% of revenues, approximately 994 billion in the US. Aba, marami pa lang companies ang pwedeng bumagsak dahil sa pagnanakaw. Okay? So, very critical yan. Loss by position within the company, kung minsan, uh, sabi nga nila eh, uh, 23% of the fraud is committed by top management or the owner themselves. And then 37% by managers and 40% by rank and file employees, the lower employees. But when you talk about the amounts that have been lost, I tell you, yung mga nawawalang pera na ninakaw ng owner o ng top management ay napakalaki. No? It's roughly about 80% of the total. See? Kahit na konti lang yung nangyayaring fraud sa taas, pero malakihan ang ninanakaw nila. Sa iba ba, bariya-bariya lang. Okay? So again, let's pay attention to management fraud because that's where the big money is. And that could lead to the bankruptcy of a company. I'll tell you a case about a company that went bankrupt because of fraud. Okay? So the biggest cases around the world were that of Enron, WorldCom, Adelphia, and others. No? So I'll tell you more about uh, a particular case, what you call now the landmark case of the century the biggest fraud case ever okay and that is the enron case so wala yatang accountant na hindi nakakaalam ng istorya ng enron let me tell you about it let's do some storytelling here enron corporation was a u.s energy commodities and services company based in houston texas before its bankruptcy on december 2 2001 enron employed 20,000 employees and one was what was one of the world's leading electricity, natural gas, communications, and pulp and paper companies in the world with revenues with a staggering nearly $101 billion in year 2000. Okay? Enron shareholders filed a $40 billion lawsuit after the company's stock price, which achieved a high of 90.70 per share in the mid-2000, plummeted to $1 na lang. Ibig sabihin, bumagsak ang value ng stocks nila. Ano nangyari? That happened by the end of November 2001. So within one year, almost two, less than two years, bagsak ang kanilang stocks. What happened? The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission or SEC began an investigation of around that time. Okay? So, Enron 64.4 billion in assets made it the largest corporate bankruptcy in the U.S. history until WorldCom's bankruptcy the next year. WorldCom is a UK-based company. Enron's complex financial statements were so confusing to the stakeholders and the analysts, okay, but they were able to debunk it. In addition, its complex business model and unethical practices using limitations to misrepresent earnings and modify the balance sheet to indicate favorable performance. Ibig sabihin, dinodoktor nila yung kanilang financial statements. The combination of these issues later resulted in the bankruptcy of the firm. Kaya bumagsak ang shares of stocks nila. Okay? So, uh, pag tinignan natin yung regulatory oversight of the Enron case, you have the SEC, you have their own internal audit committee, and then they have their external auditors, the Arthur Anderson, the, one of the biggest at the time, no? the auditing firms in the world. Then you have the board of directors, and then you have the shareholders. They're all looking at the company report. <coughs> now let me continue with the story. And the majority of these uh, uh, sh uh, shareholders were this scandal no? in, in Ron were perpetrated by the indirect knowledge and direct actions of Kenneth Lay, the CEO, Jeffrey Skilling, the COO, Andrew Fasto, the CFO, and other executives. Skilling, the COO, constantly focused on meeting Wall Street expectations, advocated the use of mark-to-market accounting, accounting based on market value, which was inflated. Aren't we supposed to record according to cost? Sabi niya, market value, which is not accepted. Okay? Uh, of course, there are rare instances you have to allow that, but here, no, it has to be book value. Okay? This pressured Enron executives to find new ways to hide its debt. Kasi baon sila sa utang. 
Pasto and other executives not only misled Enron's board of directors and audit committee on high-risk accounting practices, but also pressured Arthur Anderson, their external auditors, to ignore the issues. So the auditors were pressured and they did not tell the truth in their reports. Meanwhile, Arthur Anderson fired its partner in charge of auditing the Enron Corporation, who ordered the destruction of thousands of documents and email messages after learning that the SEC had begun investigating on Enron's accounting. The fired partner of Arthur Anderson, his name is David Duncan, he called for a meeting of auditors at the firm's Houston office and ordered an expedited effort to destroy documents. And you see, in the courts of law, that is obstruction of justice. And he ordered that on October 23, 2001, the day after Enron disclosed that the SEC had began its inquiry. So in the PowerPoint presentation, you could see the visual representation of what happened to the Enron scandal, the Enron profile, okay? Let's go down now to the crucial questions. No? The destruction apparently did not end until Mr. Duncan's assistant sent an email message to the other secretaries on November 9, a few weeks later, that said, stop the shredding. So they were shredding the documents, okay? Anderson had received a subpoena from the SEC the day before. In 2006, top executives of Enron were found guilty of fraud and conspiracy. So it took five years to investigate this huge scandal. Tagal din, ano? So a jury in the United States has found the accountancy firm Arthur Anderson, one of the biggest in the world, guilty of obstructing justice by shredding documents relating to the failed energy giant. At iyan ang naging dahilan kung bakit bumagsak ang one of the biggest auditing firms in the world, Arthur Anderson. Maraming nawala ng trabaho. Maraming mga accountants ang na-lay off. Nawala lahat ang kliyente nila. Because, you see, accounting is based on trust. If you cannot be trusted, if you are dishonest, no clients will come to you. That's why ethics is very important. So here are your recitation and pop quiz questions. Okay, this is for pop quiz number four, okay? I want you to answer two questions. Each question you can answer within 30 words only. So what can you say in 30 words? Maybe three sentences, okay, maximum. First question, what lessons can we learn from the Enron scandal? It's a loaded question because there's so much to learn from this scandal of the century. The second question is, what is the implication of the case to the role of CPAs and accountants in general? Ano ba ang magiging papel ng mga accountants dyan sa base dun sa nangyaring kaso sa Enron? Okay, answer these two questions in the comment section in YouTube. If you're having difficulty, just answer it anyway and then take a screenshot and send it to my FB messenger so you would have proof that you've answered it. But answer it first in the YouTube channel comment section. I repeat the two questions. First, what lessons can we learn from the Enron scandal within 30 words? And then second, what is the implication of the case to the role of CPAs and accountants in general? Also within 30 words. I'll see you in video lecture number four. Okay? Bye!